What a Strange Little Cult Written by Linwood Chapter 10 Breakthrough Part 1 Gabriel, I'd like to ask you a question. Sandy Hills drew in a deep breath in and slowly let it out through her nose. Across from her, a little green colt spared her a curious glance as he got comfortable on his pillow, setting his hooves on the full-size table between them. Sure, shoot. Her heart began to beat a little faster. This was going to be like pulling teeth. Can you tell me where you're from? He tilted his head. Um, Westfield, didn't I already tell you that? Yes, you did. The mare swallowed and shuffled her wings, mentally forcing them to stop clapping against her back so tightly and just relax. I looked through every register I could find. I even went to a cartographer. There is no town in the country named Westfield, Gabriel. The gold kept his eyes locked at her in a way that, frankly, made her shift on her pillow. He opened his mouth and closed it again, thinning it into a line. A moment passed before he tried again. So, um, you found out, huh? Sweetie, did you make that town up? Are you from someone you're embarrassed by? The cold narrowed his eyes. No, no, it's definitely real. Born and raised, kind of. It's just not in Equestria. Gabriel, there's no town on the continent with that name. No pony knows of a town called Westfield. He blinked at her several times. The clock ticked from its place on the wall, giving the empty air an unnerving rhythm. It's really, really far away. I can't help you if you aren't being honest. Who said I wasn't being honest? The two stared at each other, and somehow the counselor found herself a little intimidated by the look in the back of Gabriel's eyes. There was... something there. It was something that she'd been trying so hard to reach. What was stopping him? She straightened her spine, fixing a disapproving look on the colt, but did nothing more to try and demystify where Westfield actually was. She glanced down at her clipboard. Her pathetically sparse note stared up at her, offering painfully few talking points. How much did she really know about this cult? How much was a lie? Have you been dishonest with me before, Gabriel? He blew the air out of his nose. No, Miss Hills. At least not that I'm aware of. I'd say being deliberately misleading counts, Gabriel. Sandy tried to look as caring as she could, but it didn't feel quite right. You never specified that Westfield wasn't in Equestria. Can you see how that might lead us to the wrong conclusion, even if you didn't actually tell a lie? She saw his John Lane Harden. You never asked. Gabriel, what if you have a family that you aren't aware of? Wouldn't you? You're not going to find my family. I can promise you that much. He cut her off with the slightest bit of venom in his voice, but when he spoke again, he was softer. I just... Figured it wasn't worth mentioning. That's all. Sandy reminded herself to count to ten and breathe and jotted down a note. Self-reports family permanently unavailable. She envisioned the colts and fillies that had come before Gabe, nervous, aloof, scared, annoyed, playing with toys and hiding under the table. Anything to avoid confrontation. Countless times she had sat in here with them and calmly spoken to them, slowly but surely drawing them out of their shell. They were always so honest, so pure. She had never seen such unnerving defensiveness in any of their eyes. Not like this. Gabriel, can you tell me a little bit more of what Westfield was like? His face fell, but he didn't look away. It isn't like anything. Nobody lives there anymore, I think. She blinked. The sign ignored the fact that he used no body instead of no pony. It was... destroyed? No. He said. Just emptied. How could every pony in the whole town be... removed? Just like that? What, um... 
What happened to it? He set his little green hose on the table, one folded over the other. I'm not comfortable talking about that. Another roadblock. Regardless, the counselor recorded the status of Westfield in her notes. It looked right at home, surrounded by a dozen other miscellaneous facts about the Colts' clouded murky past that painted a dark, dark picture. History of violence. Reacted over-aggressively when provoked. Displayed clear willingness to hurt others to ensure own safety. Caretakers, self-referred parents, sister, deceased, non-pony, self-reported, likely abductors. And there at the bottom, in the corner where she would have to look at it the least. Taken another being's life. Possibly multiple. At this point, the trafficking theory was all but out the window. I have practically no idea what I'm dealing with. All the while, he gave her that guarded, mistrusting look. She clenched her jaw and first herself to keep her back straight. She needed to get in talking about something. It didn't matter what. Once foals begin to speak, once she coaxed them out, they usually told her everything she needed to know to give them help. With any luck, it would work on him too. So, dear? She said after a silence that was entirely too long. I'm told you spent yesterday with some fillies from school. Her shoulders relaxed just the tiniest bit. Um, it was fine, I guess. Did you have fun? The slightest smile graced his face, and for a moment she glimpsed the foal that she knew was in there. Yeah, actually. More than I thought I would. We hung around after school and went to the park and stuff. They're good kids. That's it. There we go. Oh, I'd love to hear more. Um, well... They initiated me into their little club the other day and had this whole ceremony, so I'm, um, officially a cutie mark crusader. They gave me a cape and everything. He twisted around to look at his flanks. I wonder if I'll ever get one. Finally, an issue she actually knew how to address. What fool wasn't nervous about getting their cutie mark? Oh, don't worry, dear. Everybody grows at their own pace. There's no hurry. I promise you'll get your mark when the time is right. He said with a comforting smile. I promise. Raised an eyebrow and bit his lip, still giving his rear a somewhat quizzical look. I don't know. I'm not exactly like you guys. Who knows if I've got that weird... whatever... magic in me. She giggled a bit. <laughs> Take it from a mare who went through the same thing. I'm confident that you do. We've all worried about it at some point in our lives, but all ponies have that magic. It's part of who we are. He bit his lip and furrowed his brow. Sure. He's closing off. Switch the topic. Well? Sandy said sounding as casual as possible. What kind of cutie mark do you want? <laughs> None. The cult said with a snort. Not really my style, I think. She bit her cheek. It wasn't the first time she's seen this. Sometimes foes denied wanting a cutie mark because that was easier than admitting they actually did want a special talent and just hadn't discovered it yet. Well, what if you had to pick? He only shrugged. Come on, there's so many cool, fun talents to have out there. He rolled his eyes. Knowing myself, I'd actually rather not know. What about stunt flying? Oh, or exploring? Sandy did her best to sound enthusiastic. I hear Rainbow thinks you're quite the little artist. How about a drawing, cutie mark? Can you stop? He stuck out his tongue with half-lidded eyes. You're gonna make me sick. What? Has she misstepped? What's wrong? I need you to use your words to tell me if I upset you, Gabriel. <sighs> that! He gave the table a light stomp with a hoof and huffed. <laughs> you just... You don't have to be so condescending all the time. I'm not a little kid. This again. He was so wrapped up in his head to act adult-like, and Sandy was no closer to understanding exactly why. What had she done wrong? He furrowed her eyebrows. But, dear, you're... <laughs> yeah, believe me, I know. 
He lifted his forelegs and inspected them, disdain painted across his little face. I'm tiny. I can see that. Where is this coming from all of a sudden? The cult had no problem with this before. Rainbow hadn't mentioned any resistance of being treated like a foal. Then again, Rainbow also hadn't told her about the lightning incident. He agreed to go to school, and he even hung out with three little fillies who Sandy knew, for a fact, were not the most mature girls in town. If I had been doing something that you don't like, Gabriel, I'd be happy to stop. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Some of the anger evaporated from the cult's eyes, and he slumped back into his seat, shrugging as he spoke. I don't know. The novelties wore off, I guess. I'm tired of pretending I'm something that I'm not. And what made the, um, novelty wear off? He drew on the inside of his cheek and folded his hooves over one another again. When I broke that kid's leg, it was a real reminder. Oh, honey, she said. No pony blames you for what happened. We all know that you didn't mean to hurt Diamond. His eyes jumped to hers in a flash full of fire again, and the council knew that she had made a mistake. What did I just tell you, lady? Come on! He reared up on his hind legs, stomping the table. Were you even listening to me? Did what I say register? A flash of anger jolted off the counselor's spine. I'm trying to help you! He clenched his jaw as they stared at one another, forcing air through his flaring nostrils. What is it, huh? Sandy blinked, drew in a breath, and slowly, very slowly let it out. She had failed to reach him again. The conversation had been going somewhere, and then what had she done? She'd fallen back on her experience, on her training, on the past. What had made her do that? This cult is the opposite of normal. Why am I using my normal methods? The counselor turned in her cheeks. Gabe stayed perfectly still, eyes still locked on her. It was like he knew how to stare right into her soul. The clock ticked on. Tick. Talk. Fine, she thought. Let's try something new. I'm sorry. Sandy began. I didn't mean to offend. That wasn't my intent. The gold's mouth thinned into a line. Okay, then. All right. He let out a sigh as he settled back into his seat, his gaze wandering around the brightly painted room. Just, um, don't do it again. I don't plan to. The counselor said, completely honestly. The cult produced a hum that implied that she would have to prove it. So, prove it she would. The mayor glanced over her shoulder. It's getting pretty close to lunchtime, and I didn't have a big breakfast. Would you like to grab a bite to eat with me? Gabriel blinked and cocked his head. His eyes danced over her face, searching for something. What, I wonder? Sandy thought to herself. Dishonesty? Um, sure. I can't pay, though. Oh, that's quite all right. My treat. She began to strap on her saddlebags, drawing an even more confused look from the cult. What? You mean right now? Of course. She replied she pulled her bag's belly strap tight. Why not? The, um, therapy session? She smiled at him. I thought we could talk on the way or while we eat. Get out of the stuffy room for a while. Sound good? He stared at her for a long while. Once again, Sandy tried to guess what was going on behind those deep brown eyes. She came up empty. Yeah, I guess. Well, get your saddlebags on then. Gabriel took a little longer to get ready. He had a bit of trouble with the strap on his bag, fumbling with its buckle. But Sandy didn't try to give him a huff. The cult managed on his own after a few moments and nodded to her after making sure it was good and tight. She wondered if the strap hurt, pressing against his fresh scar. What am I thinking? Of course it does. The sun shone hot and bright as the two left the ministry office and headed towards Main Street, particularly fitting for the last few days before the scheduled rainstorm. The streets shuffled and shook with the hoofsteps of a colorful herd, vibrant and lively ponies enjoying their weekend, and a healthy cloud of dust hung in the air, kicked up by the mass traffic. It smelled rich and earthy. 
The smell and enthusiastic day, and the ponies around them only made it better. Sandy felt the mistrust and frustration of the stifling therapy room escape into the open sky as the two made their way along. Garretop smiled from the corner as she chatted with Colgate. Bon Bon showed off her sweets to Little Rumble from behind her stand, winking as she pressed one into his hoof. Mrs. Cake and Pinkie Pie yelped and hollered as they tried to corral two rambunctious little scamps dashing and flying through the multicolored forest of pony legs. The latter paused for just a moment to give the duo a big, excited, two-hoofed wave and promptly tumbled over, taken out by the little pound's surprise crash landing. Cindy's eyes widened in brief alarm, but she relaxed as soon as she heard the full giggling louder than Pinky. The counselor turned to Colt with a smile. So, Gabe, when would you like to eat? I'm not the one who's been living here for more than two weeks. He said back at her with a lopsided smirk. Any ideas? Sandy rubbed her chin with a huff and hummed. Hmm. You know, I've been craving a big greasy hay burger recently, and there's a good place nearby. How does that sound? The sight of his grin refreshed the mayor's spirit. That sounds fantastic. It ended up being a superb idea. The cook must have decided to put something special into his work today because the picturesque, perfectly cooked burgers tasted absolutely incredible. The two devoured their lunches ravenously. Then he thought of talking forgotten, and as they leaned back satisfied and oh so full, Sandy let out a particularly undignified burp. It was loud enough to turn heads, but she couldn't find it in her to care. <laughs> Whoops, excuse me. Gabriel chuckled and took a sip from his vanilla shake before leaning back in the booth. <laughs> you aren't kidding. This place is pretty good. I'm glad you like it. I used to come here all the time before I noticed a little too much of it was going to my flank. She said with a wink, drawing a laugh out of Gabe. <laughs> Are you from Ponyville? Has this place been around for a while? She shook her head. I've moved here. Oh, three years ago? And it was here back then, too. Sandy said, It felt nice just to have a normal conversation. Not that she didn't love her work, but it could get sad when you only talked about Pony's problems. I'm originally from Manhattan. Oh, city girl, huh? He threw in a twang of a country accent. It was quite like the apples. Something about it was different. Something she couldn't quite describe. What made you move out here? Honestly? She then in close smirking. Don't tell any pony I said this, but Manhattan kind of stinks. It's crowded and the ponies there are all so stuck up, and city life is exhausting. I don't know how my parents stand it. He chuckled. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, sister. Then he paused, blinking, before looking at the table for a while. The cold coughed and cleared his throat. <clears> throat> hey, um... I'm sorry for kind of blowing up at you earlier. That wasn't cool of me. A quiet moment passed, and he coughed. <clears throat> so, yeah. Sorry. Apology accepted. Sandy nodded. Thank you. Mm-hmm. He took another sip from his shake. He's much more relaxed, though. His spirits seem a little higher. If there's a time to ask about what's troubling him, this is it. You mentioned that Monday's incident reminded you of something. She began. What did that remind you of, Gabriel? Nicole rubbed at his face with a huff. Reminded me of... Um... You know... Things I've done. Who I am. Getting warmer. And who are you really? Some pony capable of breaking little kid's legs in a heartbeat, apparently. He grumbled as he looked towards the kitchen. His ears twitched at the hound of hissing grease and orders being called out. Not like you. The cult was clearly struggling with some intense feelings. Guilt, she guessed. Likely over past actions. Did he see himself as scarred over what he was made to do? As less deserving of a try at happiness? Well... She began. For what it's worth, I don't think you and I are so different. For example, we both love these burgers. She looked down at the grease stained red and white paper on the plate before her. Um, I'd hold mine up to make my point, but I ate it. He smiled. 
I guess. And we both like Ponyville. You've got me there. And... We've both lost family we care about. Goldseer snapped up and his eyes widened. Oh, um, I didn't... Um... Who'd you lose? If... Um... You don't mind me asking. It's alright. Bendy gave a reassuring smile, though it was a little sad. I don't have any brothers or sisters, but I was very close with my cousin growing up in Manhattan. She was older than me, and just about the most stubborn filly you ever could have met. But we still did everything together. School, flying, messing around, whatever. You didn't see one of us without the other. Hmm. The goat smiled to himself. Reminds me of my sister. You want to know the funny thing? It was always her talking about wanting to become a psychologist. She loved learning about ponies' minds, and she had a real knack for helping ponies talk to their problems. Her cutie mark was a lounge chair for Celestia's sake. The two ponies shared a bit of a laugh over that. But then... Her smile fell at its corners, fading, but she didn't let it disappear entirely. Well, to make a long, sad story shorter, she got sick and never got better. She swallowed. Her passing was the final push that convinced me to enroll at the school she always talked about. It helped me, too. Every time a foal talked through their problems, it's like she's still there beside me, you know? He nodded. But Sandy already knew how perfectly he understood. What was her name? Gentle Breeze. She said. It felt almost wrong to say it out loud. She didn't remember the last time she'd done so. She sounds really nice. I wish I could have met her. Sandy chuckled at the thought. <laughs> you two would have either been fast friends or absolutely despised each other. Sounds like she would have gotten along great with my sister then. We fought all the time. We hummed. Huh. I guess you have a point. Now we're getting somewhere. Sandy thought. But... He continued. I've done some things in my life that I'm not really proud of, Sandy. That I don't want to do anymore. It felt more than a little strange to hear him use her first name. I've, um, I've done some really messed up things. He swallowed. I've hurt a lot of people. I don't think that just because we've made mistakes in our past, or have been made to do bad things, that we shouldn't get a chance. Cindy smiled. You're no bad pony, Gabriel. You're a better one than you believe. And I think you deserve to be happy. Um, the girl tapped his hoofs together and looked down, but she caught a shy smile. That's nice of you to say. Thanks. You're very welcome. Gold slipped on his shake a little bit, and the comfortable silence passed. You wanted to know about Westfield, Gabriel said out of the blue. Sandy raised an eyebrow. Only if you're comfortable sharing. He shrugged. There isn't much to share, honestly. It was a normal town. Not that different from here, actually. Gabe's mouth twisted up for a moment. I used to live there, and I had to leave. We all did. For all intents and purposes, it doesn't exist anymore. No family. No people. Nothing. It's gone. He nudged his empty burger wrapper with a hoof. I didn't talk about it because I figured it just didn't matter. I wasn't trying to lie or trick you, just... not draw attention to things that don't need it. The counselor smiled gently. I know what you mean. She said. Every pony has things they'd prefer not to talk about. I just want you to remember that I'm trying to help you, and not just because it's my job. If it takes time for you to be ready to talk about your past, that's okay. We're not on a deadline or running out of time or anything like that. 
Nicole smiled at her, but he didn't respond and looked away a moment later. Then he listened to the grills behind the restaurant counter sizzle as she watched passersby outside the window and smiled to herself. This was the way to reach him. It's tragic to see a fall forced to grow up so fast. But it's the truth, and there's no going back. It's time we start acknowledging that. It would take hard work and a lot of time, but it'd be worth it. The goat made a polite little cough. <clears throat> so, he said, You want to get another burger? Oh, absolutely. I apologize, the voices are just a little bit off. I'm still a little bit sick. Most of it is gone, but it's still there. Probably maybe a few more days until I'm back up 100%. So I hope you don't mind too much of these more staggered recordings. I'm doing them as soon as I have both the energy and just, you know, when you can really feel like you can record or do something. But I absolutely love this. I, I've actually really enjoyed, uh, a side note, as I'm, as I'm doing this off the cuff, I've really enjoyed being able to upload my stories in a more consistent manner with having, I think I have three in rotation right now. TCP, Diaries of a Madman, What a Strange Little Cult. No, and You're Human and You. Having those four in rotation feels a lot better than the six I had before. Gosh. So I hope you guys don't mind trying to maintain a schedule like this. Um, I need to finish this and like uh, what a strange little cult. And I believe the rest are Patreon requests besides TCP, but I'm never dropping TCP. So, <laughs> but my rambling aside, I'd like to thank my wonderful Patreons. Thank you, my tier ones, Chase the Master, Jason, Squall, One Feather, Lunar Gaze, Eighth Day of Night, Starlight Blaze, Hyperlink, Night and Game, Redeemer of Dark and Dreamless Portal. My tier two is Captain Blue Shadow, The Animated Ghost, Solus, HKH4, AKA Texture, Sword Brother, Mordred, Nocturne, DJ Max 2000, Papa Lennon, Can Panzer, and Elemental Wolf. And of course, a large thing to my Titan tiers, User1842, Dark Guardian, Danish Dash, Maverick, and Silent Titan. I appreciate you guys' support so much, and it means a ton to me. That aside, however, this has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.